Hello, e senior citizens. I thought I'd try, and the word try is going to be very pertinent here, and put a video together to show you how you can stream uh, to allow you to voluntary stream the uh, e seniors races when we're, we're struggling with someone to stream it. Obviously, you need to provide your own commentary. But what I wanted to do was show you with some very simple tools that are all free what you can do now obviously you can invest and i'll cover that so i've done a rough agenda of what i'm going to cover in this session as i say hopefully i'll get everything for you so you can understand it but you can always ask me questions if there's something you're not clear on so tools you need streamlabs obs so streamlabs obs is free software and what it allows you to do is take images from your computer take the sound from your computer from your microphone and basically push it out to a server which could be a youtube server twitter server or whatever so what that means is you can actually have settings set up stream something you're watching or something you're doing and that will appear on the world wide web for people to watch you'll also need ks broadcasting test client now there's a few different options out there and there's not really very many that are half decent one one's got a good interface but crashes all the time which is a nightmare um, there's one that come with qnos that they stopped development of uh, which is this case broadcasting test client that does work it does everything you need to a certain degree and doesn't appear to crash it's a shame they never invested time into it um, but it is usable i use something which is a subscription based piece of software called acc tv which has got um, basically a KS Broadcasting test client built into it, but it's got a lot of bells and whistles on it. You know, the fundamentals are based on the test client, and I will go through that with you and show you how easy it is to use. And that's really the crux of what it is we need to cover. And you'll also need a Seto Corsa Competizione. All right, so uh, there you are, what I would class as the three core elements in order to allow you to stream. But before all this starts, you've got to understand how youtube works and what i mean by that it's not a case of just saying show my video on youtube yes you can upload videos but more often than that when you're streaming you want to do it real time and there's a lots of different settings you can set to do bit rates and stuff like that i'll go through what i've got my settings on i tend to stream at 1080p 60 frames per second that comes out really smooth good resolution and doesn't require too much power in order to do that obviously if you want to go higher it introduces additional problems more processing you get a bigger delay in being able to chat with people real time on the stream and stuff and it goes from anything from two seconds to up to 30 seconds delay based on the different sort of stream you want to do all right so i'll cover that as well um very very basically for you so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at how you schedule a stream on youtube so what i'm going to do is show you the eseniors youtube page and i'll go through this with you um, in a little bit, bit of detail and explain how it all works so this is the seniors one and this can be your own youtube channel but obviously for reasons of support i i'm showing the seniors one because that's what i tend to do you'll see a little camera icon when you click on that you get a couple of options upload or go live Now the go live doesn't mean you're going live this minute what it means is you want to prepare to go live so in this example, I'm going to the equivalent of a schedule a stream. I'm going to click go live. What it'll do is it'll take me through a screen and allow me to either create a new stream uh, or schedule a stream. So I'm going to schedule a stream in this example. And if I've already done it previously, it'll show me one that's been set up before. At this point, it's really important to realize, always try to reuse settings. If at this point you do a create new, what the system will do is it'll generate a new key for you. Although a new key is not a problem, what it means is you've got to go through a bit more setup behind the scenes every time you do a new stream. So in the sake of this one, we're going to re reuse settings. And you can see there, it's the GT3 Championship from yesterday. I'm going to click reuse settings. The first thing you want to give it is the title, the description, obviously something meaningful. Uh, and I'm going to call this test stream. I'm going to call it test stream description for the sake of what we're doing. And then all these are optional, 
but it does mean that if people search for a set of Corsa Competizioni, this will potentially appear. So these, in effect, are similar to tags. So it allows you to find things. The next thing that is an icon is really important. It's your placeholder in YouTube. So every week I go through and create a new one of these forms, uh, one of these pictures, in effect, just to show you that that's what's coming up. So we'll always have something ready that's respective as a placeholder. If people stumble across the website for YouTube of the seniors, we'll see that a, 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 an event is live soon and it's event of X, Y and Z. OK, so it's really important to at least have an identity with the uh, stream you're trying to create. The rest of the items on this page you can ignore. It's up to you whether you say it's yes, it's made for kids. Burn in mind, it's down to language. And what you do want to do is have a stream that's suitable for kids and then allow people to swear on the stream because that potentially was going to give you a YouTube strike. Three strikes, you're out. OK, so um, I always have this set as it's not meant for kids. Uh, purely, therefore, it's defending the stream in case anything gets said that shouldn't get said i'm going to click next and then this is the bit where you determine how that stream is going to be presented so the first two do you want live chat the first one means if you tick that box people can chat while the stream is active so if you ever watch these seniors streams you'll see people chatting in the uh, stream themselves that's what that refers to the live chat replay means that that chat is recorded as part of the stream if anybody goes to watch that stream back they will see the chat happen as it would have happened at a real-time basis so again we have that ticked in both cases um, you will see some people who say chat disabled that's up to you but from an e-senior's perspective we allow people to chat who, uh, who can send messages anyone or subscribers so what that means is you can block people out well we don't have any sort of rules around that if they want to come to the stream they might not have subscribed and they've stumbled across it so it's always good to allow them to chat because they might be interested in joining they might want to subscribe and so on um, the message delay leave it on the default don't do it in slow mode because of the way we stream we want the messages to be quite quick coming up on the screen otherwise you could be talking about something that happened two three minutes ago and it's not really the right situation to be when you're talking something that's real time on the next option we then get the option of making it private unlisted or public so private means we can choose who can watch it. Unlisted um, means anyone with the stream link can watch your stream, but um, in effect, they've got to have the stream uh, ID for them to watch it. And public means anyone. So obviously we want this to go out to the world. So we want it to be anyone can stream. Uh, watch this in effect. The next bit is your schedule, the date and the time. Okay, so I'm going to schedule this for seven o'clock. And done. What that will do is it will create this placeholder. This placeholder, in effect, is a way of you just tweaking some final settings. So don't worry too much about these items on the left hand side. Okay, I will go through them in a little bit of detail for you, but you don't really change them. You change them, you, you can actually break what, what you're trying to stream. The ones on the right enable auto start. If that's set, what it means is you don't have to start the stream in YouTube. You can start it from OBS. That's basically what it means. Enable auto stop. If OBS stops, the stream should stop. If you don't have that checked, the, checked, the stream will carry on once OBS is closed down. So you'll have to manually stop the stream. I'm not too sure what the DVR means, but I um, presume it's to do with uh, the resolution of the recording while you're doing it live. And we don't usually touch anything else. The items on the left-hand side is... Your, your settings in effect how you want the stream key to work so desktop rtmp is to do with the type of server and, and we want this to be at a 1080p stream that's the stream key you will notice that that is hashed out that's because it's a key and it's unique to eSeniors and if you create a new uh, stream every time you will get a new key or you'll get collisions what we call a collision with a key if you get a collision it will cause you problems so that key is really important you'll notice there's a copy button so we will need that key at some point and I'll go through that with you uh, shortly but there's a copy button and we will need that option don't touch these two uh, the stream URL and the backup server URL okay we don't really need to do that that's all to do with how YouTube works and the um, the the real-time server if you like of what's being streamed stream latency you can have normal low or ultra low now, ultra low basically means you've got like a two to three second delay of what I'm streaming versus what you see. 
so you have got a two to three second delay behind that low latency moves that boundary up to about 15 seconds so there's a 15 second lag between what i'm seeing and what you're going to see outside in the real world and normal latency is about 30 second delay so it's significant now the difference between the three of them apart from the delay is that at ultra low latency you're using maximum bandwidth what it also means is it doesn't support closed captions which we're not using anyway it doesn't support 1440 and it doesn't support 4k if you want to if you want to run at that resolution or stream at that resolution you will need to select one of the others but you've got to realize if you do that there's going to be a massive delay between you streaming and that communication in the chat is going to be delayed as well probably even more so so just be aware i always try to stream at 1080p 60 frames per second which means i can do a, i can get away with ultra low latency and when you're when you're done with that that's it it's, it's set it's set up it's ready to go if you want to know the key sorry the the url to put on facebook to put in discord if you press the little back arrow that i press then i'll do that again the little arrow there takes you back to a placeholder where all your streams may be you'll notice as i hover over that three dots appear so click on that one of them is get shareable link that get shareable link option will now copy that url to the uh, what will be the clipboard and if i use that url in here for example what it will do is it'll take me to where that stream would be and you can see there's a stream and it's scheduled set a reminder so they'll see the graphic I've set up as a placeholder, but that stream is not live. It's scheduled, as you can see. Okay, so that URL is what you can share to people to say, here's my stream, go and watch it, please subscribe and like and so on. So that is the YouTube side of it. We'll revisit this in a minute because we need to get the stream key, as I mentioned. Okay, so back to what are, is our agenda, uh, just to make sure we're going to cover everything from... Um, everything I want to show you through to, in effect, everything I want to cover from a YouTube perspective. So I'm just going to switch off the YouTube and there you can see me agenda back again. So the first bit we've covered there is the scheduling stream on YouTube. Now what we want to do is we want to look at YouTube, uh, the Streamlab parameters for YouTube themselves. It's quite difficult in, in Streamlabs because you can't really capture itself in its windows. You can to a degree, but it's a bit messy. So some of these are done through um, images and some of these are done through, obviously, interaction. So the first thing I'm going to show you is what Streamlabs looks like. So this is Streamlabs. It's broken up into a couple of different areas. The top portion is what's being captured. The left portion at the bottom on the left hand side are what we call scenes. The middle portion is what we call our sources. And the right hand side is our sound mixer and the volume control of each of the outputs so on the left hand side we mentioned they are called scenes a scene can contain any number of sources these sources will relate to what you want to show what people want to hear what voices you want them to hear what videos what images what tunes you create them all as sources and then what you can do is switch them on and off by clicking on what would be the little eye icon so you can see i've currently got OBS showing on the screen if I click on the little glass icon there that disappears because in effect I've switched it off I'm going to switch it back on now from here there are three things that are required in the settings in order for you to change the parameters and stream best from a Streamlabs perspective they are accessible by clicking on the cog button so as mentioned I can't capture these so these are images so the first one I'm going to show you is the options, but from the stream perspective. So I'll click on the stream and I'll enable that and you can see the screen pop up there. OK, so that's how it would pop up if you clicked on the config button or the cog button. The window we're interested in is the one under the what would be the stream. You can see there we've got the stream type, which is streaming services. Uh, we've got the service, which is YouTube RTMPS. Um, and you can see there we've got the primary YouTube ingest server. So that's basically the server that's going to capture the data. You'll also see the reference to the stream key. So just going back to what was our uh, screen before in YouTube, for example, we looked at something and we thought, well, hold on a minute, there's a, there's a key there with a copy button. If you click that copy button, you can then paste it into the stream key field here. And then what that will do is it'll link your Streamlabs OBS back to that YouTube stream in effect 
So it now knows that the details of what you're streaming are, are on screen linked back to YouTube in relation to that. So that's your first element of setup. Your second element of setup is how you want the, um, the information to be captured. And this is referring to the output, which is the next option down. So again, in here, you can have lots of different settings. Um, YouTube supports a minimum, what we call video bit rate. If you don't stream at that minimum, minimum video bit rate, what will happen is you'll get errors in the stream and it'll look really, really poor for people watching it. We always try to do it as good a quality as possible. You've got two options at the top, simple or enhanced or advanced. You don't need to worry about that. Keep it on simple. Your video bit rate I've got set to 5,000. You can go lower, but 5,000 is a quite nice number. And in fact, what you end up with is a very, very clear stream in relation to that. If you use an NVIDIA, you can set the NVENC decoder, which uses the video card to decode. If you use an AMD, I don't know what the equivalent is in AMD, but ultimately you've got software or hardware encoding. Software means it's going to be using your CPU. Hardware means it's going to be using your GPU. Um, so it's up to you how you want that to work. The audio bitrate, leave that at 160. That's basically the quality of the sound. If you have that too low, the sound will become very, very tinny and very washed out. So 160 gives you quite a good voice reproduction. You don't need to enable in, um, advanced uh, encoder uh, settings at this point. In the recording element, this is down to if you want to record locally. So at the bottom of Streamlabs, you'll see a go live button and you'll see a record button. Click on the record button, that's the location where it's going to go. Okay, so you can actually record locally, then upload to YouTube at a later date. And in fact, if you just click that button screen off, you'll see the go live button and you'll see the record button at the bottom of the screen. Okay, go live, record. The next one I'm going to show you is the video settings. So this is the fourth, fifth option down. You've got stream output, audio and video. So in the video settings, 1080p is recommended. 1080p, 60 frames per second, gives a really good high quality stream. You can go lower um, and it's down to really what's available to you. But the lower you go, you'll end up with, um, obviously the quality image reduces, the size of the video reduces as well, to be honest. But um, it's nice to have 1080p, 60 frames per second. So I've got mine set to the base size, and the output so you can use scaling which means your base and then it'll compress it down again if you're talking screen dimensions it may actually look a bit uh bit wrong in relation to that in relation to the downscale filter i'm using a default uh by, by cubic the 16 samples okay so um again that works fine for me it'll probably work the same for yourself the fps type i'd use common fps values and hard code it to 60 frames per second all right and that means you'll have a 1080p stream at 60 frames per second so they are the basics of setting what i would class up as uh, obs you then got to create what we call a series of uh, what we call scenes and sources okay the scenes are really what you're talking about when you decide you're going to um, stream a topic is the best thing to do and the sources are things within that topic so I'm going to go back to mine and again, ignore the picture at the top, but hopefully you'll see um, the bit I'm talking about in relation to this. So I'm going to show OBS and you can see OBS is displayed on the, on the screen. On the left hand side here are what we call scenes. So the one I'm currently playing with is called how to stream. And in the middle are all my um, what we call sources. So I can switch a source off. So for example, if I switch off that Streamlabs OBS source, it goes off. If I switch it back on, it comes back on. Dead straightforward, really easy. Now, in here, you can see I've got all my different sources set up so I can display different things. If I wanted to show you File Explorer, because I've got it set up that way, there's File Explorer, and we'll review that again in a minute. If I wanted to show you Steam, I've got one set up for Steam, and there's Steam. Okay, so I've got all these windows set up. Now, I can just click on a little icon on here. I'll put OBS back on and you'll see that there's a little eye with a line through it on some of them. That basically means on or off, on or off. Okay, so you can switch them on and off quite easily. Now, later on, I'll refer to a stream deck. If you've got an Elgato stream deck, you can program the buttons to do that for you. And it's a lot easier because you can put sub menus on and put delays on and stuff like that. So you can enhance the experience a little bit. 
But that said, you don't need a stream deck. You can easily do things in here. So what you do in here is, first of all, is you create yourself this master scene. Once you've created your scene, you would then have your sources. Now in here, your sources have got to be everything what you want to consider. So on the right hand side here, you'll see I've got three audio inputs. I've got my headset and you can see that moves as I talk. One, two, three. You can also see I've got desktop audio. So at the moment, I've got um, a set of course running in the background. If I put the volume up on that at the moment, what you'll notice is if I unmute that little mic, that sound starts playing. And that is a set of course of competition in the background. The desktop audio, in effect, reflects the sound you hear from um, the, the, the thing that's on the screen, the game, the video, whatever, it'll capture that. The desk Discord audio there is that if I wanted to capture somebody else's voice as part of my stream, I can pipe the audio from Discord through to this stream. So when I've got Jeremy with me, um, if I go to live stream commentary, you'll see I've got disc I've got Discord audio in here somewhere. Just let me see. I've got that many. So what that does is that will take anything Jeremy says or Jonathan when Jonathan joins, for example, and it'll pipe through there so you can hear what they're saying. So I've got myself with the mic, I've got Discord audio, and I've also got the desktop audio. But you can see I've got a lot more because I do a lot of other things as well um, on my live stream. And this is all about building up your confidence with doing different things. Okay. Now, one thing to realize adding sources is try to name things something meaningful. Because if you need to go back and change it, if you haven't named them, it'll be a nightmare. So, for example, if I wanted to add something, clicking on the little plus button will bring up a menu. On that menu, you'll have many different options. You'll have standard and widgets. Ignore the widgets for now. They're not really what we're going to be work working on. And in fact, I have no widget set up on mine whatsoever. If you look at the left hand side, you can see image, browser source, slideshow and so on. Some of these I don't use. I don't see a need for them. But ones I do use are image. So an image will display a standard image. So going back to the ones we normally display at the start of the stream, where it's have the, it got the picture of the car, it says the stream is going to start and so on. That's the static image. And that will display on the screen uh, until I switch it off or swap scenes or different sources. So what you do is select the directory. And then you make that available when you want that image to show. So it's really good as a placeholder or a static image showing a table and so on. So in fact, mine on the oh, ECNIA's one, the table is also an image. And I set that up before each race. Browser source allows you to select the URL. Uh, and in effect, it will show the contents of the web page. If you're doing a talk about a website and you've got scoring and stuff on there, you can click through the website and it'll capture that for you as well. Uh, the other one I use is display capture. So display capture will capture a specific window. So if you've got multiple monitors and you've got a set of course of competition running on another monitor, what you can do is you can have that captured, but actually control everything from, a, from another screen, dead straightforward, uh, and you can control that. Game capture, uh, what it does is it tries to work out what game is being shown and captures the content of the game. So there again, options I can use. Now audio input capture, is capturing sound coming in. So an example of audio input capture from this perspective is Discord audio. So Discord audio is sound that's coming in from another source and in fact goes into your headset. So when you decide you want to use audio input capture, what you do is you would select your headset. Now there's a downside here. If you're using an onboard sound card and using the jacks in the back, it's not as easy to segregate the sound as it would be using USB headphones because the USB headphones end up with their own channel, whereas the onboard jack doesn't. So sometimes that can add a bit of complexity to it. Uh, the other one I tend to use is a text or media source. So media source will show a video. So at the start of these seniors, I always do a video of the track and you can see the track rotating as an animation. That in effect is a media source and it'll play that animation as long as you need to play it. That's straightforward. Text GDI Plus is if you want text on the stream and you want that text to change. So at the start of the seniors stream, uh, you'll see a countdown. That countdown is text based and I have a program in the background that does the countdown for me. Again, there's plenty of ways of doing it. 
but what you do is you set a counter and the Streamlabs picks the counter up and refresh it every second. Window capture captures a specific window. If you've got multiple windows open with bits of information in, you can actually create a window capture for every single window and toggle between it. And in fact, the eSeniors example is when I'm streaming and I'm using ACC TV, the table that you see, the uh, tower, the timing tower, that's a window. The lap time comparison is a separate window and the fastest lap is a separate window. So I've got the game and three separate windows captured on the screen. So it gives you the effect you're all on the same screen, but they are all different captured windows. Video capture device uh, allows you to use, say, a capture card. No immediately benefit doing that within a, a PC environment unless you've got two copies of Set of Corsa, which is where you can really go to town. Two valid copies using two completely different Steam, key, uh, Steam keys. Um, you can have a Set of Corsa run on one machine. Um, you can have that running a replay video you can have that captured in a capture card and have that displaying as a window on your mainstream labs so you can have the game running real time and a re replay running in a window or vice versa so that would give you the ability to do that in a double environment and in fact some of the professional guys have that sort of environment and set up but you do need two distinct clear copies of a set of course of competition what you can't do is share it using the stream sharing and run them both at the same time I will say try it it's worth a giggle but um, it just doesn't work okay uh, audio output capture captures sound uh, coming from the computer in general so if you have audio uh, audio output capture and set it to your speakers your desktop speakers you'll hear the game if you set it to something else you'll hear that relevant channel now if you're using jack based sound as in not usb that becomes a little bit more complex because it treats the desktop audio the same as your microphone audio. So that's what you need to think about. An audio output capture will also capture your microphone from the USB headset. If you can segregate that on your device management, you're laughing because it means you can split the sound up quite clearly. Screen capture, uh, again, uh, captures the screen for you. Uh, again, which wind did you want to capture and so on and so forth. And scene, I don't use scene at all. So there are all the different sources you can add. And in, in, the, in the sources as well, you've also got the ability to uh, change characteristics of the source. So, for example, uh, one of the things that you can do is in the audio source, you can add what's called filters. Now, filters are really useful because, in effect, what a filter allows you to do is enhance the sound or make things happen. So when I stream with these seniors, I have a filter on the of what's called the noise gate. What that does is when I speak, it lowers the volume of the game behind. And when I finish speaking, it brings the game back in again. That's what's called a noise gate. So first of all, learn how to use it all and start playing with the gates. If anybody needs any settings, just give us a shout. I'm more than happy to share them with you, uh, uh, you know, as easy as required, really. So from that perspective, that's how you add a source. We're going to talk about um, setting up a set of Corsa, getting the KS broadcasting software, using it and um, how you the best settings to set the game up for because I appreciate you might run the game at 4k you might run the game at ultra wide that's not going to stream well we've said all you know 1080p really so um, what I'm going to do first of all is talk about um, acquiring a KS broadcasting test client so this is free it's free software and it believe it or not it's on Steam so I'm going to bring the Steam window forward now, by default in Steam, as you well know, if you search for something in the store, um, it, it can appear. But you can also search for it here as well. Okay, If I go to the store and start searching for, I don't know, um, a set of Corsa, you'll see I've got a couple of options in there. That's because in the store you can only buy physical entities, all right, games. If you go back to your library, and type in a set of Corsa in here again you'll see a set of Corsa now on mine I've got a section called tools and in there you'll see a set of Corsa competition dedicated server so what you do is in here is you select this drop down and either have games or tools selected if you have tools selected when you search you can search for a set of Corsa competition dedicated server okay so Set of course, a competition only dedicated server. It's not installed on my machine by, by design. 
I'm going to select it and I'm going to click on install. Now it's not massive, but it shouldn't take too long. There's waiting for it to start. And that looks like Steam's going to have a bit of a fit, but we'll see if it starts to install. It might be because the set of course is running in the background. Um, but as it stands at the moment, it's failing to install. Um, but that don't worry about that too much because I have got the files set up. I'm going to show you where the files would go. Okay. Yeah, I think because I'm running a set of Corsair. Uh, oh, no, there you go. It wants me to do it now. So just hold on a second. Um, I don't want to create the shortcut and I don't want to create a start menu. And I'm going to put it under there. You can see now that's installing. You can see it's only 13 meg. Nothing at all. We'll give that a second. And we've got a dedicated server. We don't need to worry about that because we're not going to run it. But when that downloaded, it downloaded some really nice tools for us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch off Steam. And I'm going to go to my Explorer, which is where I was a minute ago. I'll just switch off my agenda in the background as well. So in a file Explorer, you'll see my, my Steam apps common folder. And I now have a folder in there called the Setter Corsa Competizione Dedicated Server. I'm going to click inside that. And you'll see a couple of files okay you can ignore the majority of them what we're interested in is sdk so if we go into sdk we'll find a folder called broadcasting in broadcasting we'll see two folders sources and test client i'm going to click on test client and you'll see four files okay the important one is the ks broadcasting test client that is our streaming software all right, for controlling a set of course of competition. However, before you do that, there's a readme file, as you can see there. The contents of the readme file are as follows. To test the broadcasting functionality, pre-start ACC, and then go and edit your documents configuration broadcasting GSM file to the following. Um, that file will exist because you've already run ACC, but this kicks in when you put the game into broadcast mode. Okay, which is in effect joining by via the pit lane password. Um, I would always put a command password in there. I wouldn't leave it blank. So I usually put 9000 ASD ASD. Simple as that. Okay, that's normally what I would do. Um, once you've done that, save it away. And in effect, the software, the KS broadcasting software is ready to go. Now, before we run that, your next step is to start. Uh, competition so as i've showed you already i do have competition up and running and i'm going to go into there first of all and i'm going to show you how that's set up so i'm just going to switch off me explorer as you can see there and there's competition all right um no so it's not so it's not full screen i'll just make that a little bit bigger because i'm playing around with things obviously it's uh it's going to try and, and minimize the screen resolution as much as possible so i'll just make it a little bit bigger there so in competition now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sh show you what I would use as recommended video settings. So in the options, video, try and have the resolution set to 1920, 1080. You don't really need to worry about the V-Sync if you've got a powerful machine. But if you're going to um, frame rate it, limit it to something that's divisible by, you know, by 30, 30 or 60. If you do it 60, it'll be perfect sync with the stream itself. Uh, just make sure the numbers are consistent don't put something in there like 35 when you're running at 60 frames per second the two numbers just don't go um, and then you can have it on whatever settings you prefer in relation to your stream quality but that's the key one in here i'm also running this in windows windowed mode which is f11 uh, that doesn't really matter what you've got to realize though is once you're streaming um, and you click on a set of cursor you've got to press the windows key to toggle between the different windows all right so that's something you've got to be aware of click back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to search for a server. Click on multiplayer. I'm going to search for ACC Seniors. I'm doing this deliberately. And what I'm going to do is connect to one of the servers. So you can see there, we've got eight drivers on the server and it's in qualifying. There's two minutes to go. So I'm going to put the password in. This is really important. This pa password has got to be the broadcasting password and not the racing password. So at the moment on eSeniors, that's pit lane. So I'll put the word pit lane in there and I'm going to connect. Now, when I connect, that has no impact on anyone on the server. They can't see me connect and they can't see them there. I can chat to people, but they can't seem connected. I am now basically in a broadcasting mode. So I'm invisible, but I've got all the cameras and all the jiggery pokery. 
So in here now, I can't drive a car. I can click drive, but I can't physically race or drive a car. So what I'm going to do is to show you what you do next. So you click on drive. Now, this shows you the cockpit of the car currently selected, which in this case is car number two on the left hand side, uh, which is car number 118. There's function keys in the game. If you press F2, you'll see a menu comes up. You want to get broadcasting up and then it'll fade out. That's it. Broadcasting's gone. All right. But we're now in broadcasting mode. Well, what does that give us? Does that really give us anything? Actually, it does. All right. So in the stream at the moment, you can see I'm on board with Ollie, Ollie's car, who's one of the ECNews racers. Um, but he's currently sat in the pits. So there's other guys going around the, the uh, track at the moment. What I'm going to do, I'm going to tab back to my machine. And I'm now going to show you the broadcasting software. So broadcasting software is going to come up. You can see that and I'm going to keep in the background deliberately a set of course running. All right. Just so you can see the impact of this. So once this is running, the KS broadcasting software, what you can do is you'll see there's a connect button. Make sure your parameters are put in at the top. Your IP address shouldn't change. Leave it as 127.0.0.1. That's your local PC. Your port, display name doesn't really matter. Uh, your connection password, the update interval, and the command password. To be honest, set these to what you set in that file, but leave that at 250. Once you've done that, you can click connect. And what it'll do is it'll pull who is currently on the server, who is racing, and will also give you a lot of other information on the right hand side. So as I open that window up here, you can see there's a lot more fields. I'm just going to keep it to the cameras. I'll explain why in a minute. But you can see I've got Ollie, car number two, which is selected behind. I've got all these cameras. If I wanted to look and follow Andy Skelton, I just double click on Andy Skelton. And for some reason, it's not letting me do it. Um, it might be because of, because of YouTube. Or actually, I'm trying to work out whether that server is actually working. Because uh, it's not actually letting me do anything. I know why. Because I never put the sys password in connect yeah so because i didn't put that first that pass that second password in the command i can't send signals to the game but now you can see i can change the camera we're now on board with andy skelton and you can see from behind if i just switch that window off we're now on with andy skelton okay i'm going to switch to someone else who's on track which is uh, stefan and you can see now i've gone to stefan's car now, I'm not doing that in game. I'm doing that from the KS broadcasting software. All right, so back into the broadcasting software. You can see I've got the drivers. And as I click on the drivers, that display will change. What other information can I see? I can see the car number. I can see the driver. Um, I can also see the laps. The server's just been reset. As you can see, everything's gone back down to zero. Um, you'll see the word gap between the two drivers. That's the gap between them. And that will obviously be red if that gap's a small gap. So it allows you to focus on where the racing's currently going on. The bit on the right is the cameras. So I've just noticed uh, Mark Christopher's gone out. So we'll go out with Mark Christopher. He's just gone through the corner one. And you'll see we've got all these cameras here available to us. All right. If I put the chase camera, that camera now changes. So I'm going to switch this off. You can see we've changed. I'm going to click on the far chase camera. And it goes further back. I'm going to click on Helicam. And it goes to the Helicam. I am not doing this from in-game. I am doing this from that KS Broadcasting software. If I want to see it from the dash, there's it from the dash. Okay. There's a whole host of different ones. You've also got a series of TV cameras. These TV cameras here, they allow you to change the angle uh, as if you're watching it from a TV camera. So there you go. And that'll, that'll act like a TV camera. Another camera on pit lane. Another camera there. And another camera there. Okay. So you can do a number of different things. So really useful. On board, which is what I've got selected there. As you can see on board. That one, number three, will show me the, rever the rear wing. On board zero. Uh, rear uh, diffuser cam. And front diffuser cam. Uh, sorry, front splitter. So you can change the angles quite quickly and quite easily. So when you learn what all these do and how they work, you can start controlling the game. Now you'll also notice there's a couple of home uh, HUD pages here. So if I wanted to click on the trap map, there's the trap map. Yeah, I can see the trap map. Back to broadcasting. 
back to broadcasting you want to click on the timetable there's the timetable so you've got a lot of control over the game and i'm not actually in the game so once you've got to this stage you can talk you can commentate and you can control the car being viewed so we'll go, we'll jump to Derek bird there you go we're now on board with Derek bird and we'll go to the helicam and off we go into the helicam there you go i've done that in this interface as opposed to doing it from in game and that's basically how you stream now i know i've, I've got other functionality on mine one other little thing i'm just going to show you which is really useful is you'll notice there's a replay option at the top right hand side up here see the three buttons i don't use the one minute and i don't use the 10 seconds but for example if i were to go back and go to krista and there's been an incident if i click 30 seconds now minus 30 the game will rewind 30 seconds of krista's last time and start the stream off and there you go now you can't control anything now until that's finished but what it's doing is it's going to show you the last 30 seconds following that car i can change the angles so i can still go into the dash but it's the last 30 seconds of that car so if there's an incident to follow or a great over overtake or someone spun off track you can go into the um, the replay and off you go and once the replay is done obviously you're back in control of the game from that perspective or from the streaming of, of, of it um, and you'll know you've gone back because you'll see the jump like we've just seen there as well um, so the replay is really really useful on there and, and that really covers streaming from acc and from this ks broadcasting software it is actually as easy as i've made it sound now obviously i've enhanced my experience a little bit because i've added animations in for replays i've got placeholders for driver of the day i've got track maps and i've got all sorts these are things you can add to as you become more comfortable and start learning how it all comes together uh, but ultimately it's a great piece of software that's free and a lot of people don't use it and it's a shame because it does work it's a pity qnos never carried on developing it because it does actually just work um, so the final thing i'm going to cover is just talking about a stream deck with you um, so i've got a stream deck i don't know if people know what a stream deck is it's a very smart button box uh, basically so what you get with stream deck uh, for example and what i'll do is i'll switch acc off at the moment and i'll put my stream deck on the screen for you so this is the setup so first of all for e seniors what i've got is a menu and in seniors you might wonder how i get different things to happen so if i click on the intro button there that does the acc intro where it says he's seen as it goes through the animation at the beginning the click on the track button that shows me the current track if i click on table it shows me the table grid walk and so on and so forth so i've created all these buttons to do different things um, and a lot of this is plugged in from acc tv but all i'm doing is window captures ultimately they are just that just does an animation and that stops and that uh, switches the animation off in effect and goes back to live mode but what stream deck allows you to do is manipulate the scenes and the sources but you can do it with a button but what it allows you to do is do multi-events so this is a multi-event what we call a multi-event switch um, and if i click on this when i first press the button button one it what it will activate the replay animation uh in effect it'll it'll show the replay animation if i what it'll then do is do a delay of 4000 which is 4000 milliseconds so it'll count up a certain number and then it'll stop and go to the next thing the next thing it then does is it puts the word replay on the screen at the top static so if you ever watch my replays i have this animation the word replay sits at the top of the screen that activates it when i press the button again the first thing it does is deactivate the replay anim so the animation stops it switches it off and hides it what it then does is it then deactivates the static animation so the word replay on the screen removes and what it then does is it activates um i'm just trying to work out what that does actually that, that's wrong what that's doing it shouldn't be doing a replay there now that explains why i've been having problems with my replays um that tries to reactivate um in that example the animation that that shouldn't be there but the way what you can do is you can put all these up into a big long list and by clicking a button on your stream deck you get to do lots of different things um so again if i look at the intro it changes the scene to the e-seniors intro 
it then puts a delay in of 66,000 milliseconds. And then once it's finished, it goes back to um, changes the scene back to the live uh, stream commentary. So automatically after 66,000 milliseconds, it goes back to where we were. So you can see the stream live and you can you can program all these for fun. You know, and you can keep going sub may sub may sub menus. In actual fact, for the taste of testing of this, I'd actually created an example stream and source there, so you can see things changing automatically. Um, and you can put graphics on them as well. You can see I've got some graphics on mine on the seniors. You can control all graphics, but I'm not going to go into detail on that because that's added benefit. You know, if you've got a stream deck, you'll be aware of how to use it. I'm just showing you how I've got my setup in relation to that. So on that note, I'm hoping that's give you a bit of an understanding of how to stream. Inevitably, I will have missed something out. Um, and yet the bit I've missed out is this bit. I'll just show you quickly. When you're ready to stream, all you do is click the go live button in Streamlabs and that will start publishing what you're seeing on screen onto YouTube. It's as simple as that. So that's really what it is all about. Um, so it is quite easy to understand. Once you've done it once, it'll get easier and easier and easier. And hopefully you've all found that of value and you'll all be budding streamers wanting to stream all the races for us when I'm not available. So thanks very much for watching. Sorry it's gone on a little bit, but I wanted to make sure you understood it. Bye.